so it's time to finally start it. Uh, we checked the pressure before, it seemed like it was okay, so we'll start it up as uh, all the other videos. Take this off, make sure this is set to 43.5, and then you should be set. Put it back on and go from there. Should be able to adjust it from the top up here, left or right. We'll figure out which is better <laughs> for what we're trying to get to, but uh, yeah, let's give it a go. Oh man, what the heck? There appears to be a new leak or a new injector. <laughs> Wasn't there before, but now it's there, so that's unfortunate. So we'll have to take that off to fix that again, and then we'll try it again. All right, fixed it. The little leak that was over there, it took me three O-rings, and this is not, this part right here, this bolt is not super tight. I feel like every time I cinch it down, it kind of makes it go at an angle and then warps the O-ring for whatever reason. So it's just the right side that's tight, but now let's try it again. in business, no leaks. All right, so next thing now that that is done and out of the way is we're gonna try and put this intake on and get that set up to where it's sucking in air here instead of just over here. Cause it seems like the system is being over pressurized and the catch can itself is not catching everything. Well, it's catching everything, but it's definitely letting blow by. You can see it coming through. So we're just gonna suck that back up. It's probably because all this stuff is the way it is. So we're gonna try and fix it. Uh, we're gonna try and reuse this line. I may not have enough dash 10 line to utilize, but we will uh, do our best and see what we can come up with. Also got a new blade for the bandsaw, so this should be able to cut through metal in case we need to do that, which we will here shortly, and uh, we'll do it for aluminum. So it should be pretty easy to cut through that, and then we'll be set, so. All right, previously I set it up like this before. Um, I do need more AN fittings or lines in order to make it work. This one I cut a long time ago, too short now, so I need it to essentially come from over here all the way across or behind or whatever and then end up right here in front of the turbo which that's what i bought this mishimoto piece piece so it basically adapts to a dash 10 fitting and it goes down to 18 npt so it's going to be super small super shallow shouldn't let too much oil, shouldn't let too much oil through hopefully it's gonna be super small and super shallow so that's the hope but um yeah we'll just wait and see i didn't have any issues before didn't really beat on the car as much before either but yeah, so now we'll put this back to the way it was, test it out, see if it works well. If it works well, we'll be set. Um, but I need to get this lined up, figure out where I want to put it, and then cut it across. But I need to put this on first so I can figure out what the distance is and then what the cone distance is. So I know exactly how much I need to cut off that with the bandsaw, and then we'll be good to go. Good example of making a straight line. Just use a piece of cardboard paper if you have it, or any piece of paper. Just make it straight, straight edges, hold it over, push it around, trace it out, should be set. So we'll see if that works out. Probably not as straight as we want, but decently straight. Oh. Uh -huh.
see all of it, but that got super clean. Look at this. It's not straight because I can't seem to angle things correctly, but yeah, man. Okay, really, really well. So I just need to deburr this, clean it up a little bit on the edges, and then we'll be set. All right, so we have our piece. This is exactly three inch, so it has no way of going past this point at all. Wish I could weld uh, with, anyways. Uh, I don't have a TIG welder, so I can't put that on there, but uh, basically we're just going to put this on like so. And then we'll fish this part in. It doesn't matter for this, which side is going in, because again, it can't fit through the turbo itself. So we'll basically just put in whatever side we feel like putting in uh, first. For this one, it'll be this side for me. And then the rest of it's gonna go onto this. Just need to probably push it a little bit further. We need to do it off, off of it and then put it back on, so stand by. So, bars in center. We'll tighten this down. You can still see it's in there all the way through. So now that it's on there, we should be able to put this on the rest of the way. And then we should be set. So, looks kind of crazy because it is clipping the top of this, but that, I mean, we can move that around just a little bit to give it some room. Might be able to push that in a little bit further too. Oh no, there we go. So now we're straight on. We're still touching that for sure, but it's not the end of the world. So this will be the new setup. So that way, essentially it'll just suck in air from the catch can itself, bring in the good air, bring it back into the turbo, kind of complete the system. Uh, so it's not all air to atmosphere, but uh, yeah, we still need A in line for that. So may take it back off, put it back the way it was, but temporarily for now, this is where we're at. All right guys, so <clears throat> we got our Mega Squirt plug and play back after sending it out. Still the same unit as it was before, but um, yeah, the map sensor that's behind this essentially was dead from what they were telling me. So we're basically going to pull the do-it-yourself plug and play one out, put this one in, make sure that the tune is pretty much exactly the same and then test it out. So let's go from there. All right, so again, new ECU, everything's in there. I just put everything back to the, what my settings were, um, minus the actual map sensor that's set to what they had it set to. So we'll close that and then let's uh, see if we can't start it, shall we? It runs! Let's go! Let's go, baby! All right! All right! Let's go! Well, all right then. So now that that works, we're just going to keep moving forward with the new ECU instead of the old one. But uh, otherwise, not many changes we need to make on that. I think everything is already set up because it's the exact same tune as the prior one. But I think the only slight thing we need to now add because we have the functionality will be the electronic boost controller, which we already own. Flex fuel sensor, which we also already own, but we need to put into the line. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is removing the hard lines that are there today because I just I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of how this looks overall so i'm going to clean that up i'm just going to get dash 6 a in line um and then run it from the back so let me just go over there we'll run it from all the way back here and then we'll run it down we just need to get a fuel filter as well uh so we can support everything for e85 and then and then we'll look at getting a tune so i'm saving for a tune now but yeah that way we'll have everything else out of the way so sick so we swapped out the ECU and just got all our connections going for the AFR gauge and everything. So right now uh, it's set up to work and they all kick on as expected. So cool. Um, now, I mean, since we're here, I might just run the wires to the boost controller. Might wait, we'll see. Um, I need to also change the map sensor back to what the other one was on my do it yourself. 
But otherwise, I think that should be about it at this point. So keep it pushing. All right, so obviously the carpet's back in. You can barely see anything because it's all black. But now, power gauges turn on and the important one, air flow ratio stays on. So we're looking good now. Now we're just testing stuff out, going through the parameters for everything else, uh, boost control, yada, yada. I just want to test some stuff out to make sure it works. So we'll go in there, get some testing going, and then, uh, yeah, go from there. All right, so we have, oh, let me show you the other stuff where my battery dies. We currently have our electron boost controller set up. Uh, not really set up, but just connected. Power, ground, polarity doesn't matter because it's, that yeah, doesn't matter. Uh, so your ground can go anywhere, your positive can go anywhere. But uh, yeah, I'm just using the blue connector as our source for pretty much power for everything since everything else inside is causing me a bunch of issues. And then we'll come in here. I already had this turned on from earlier because I was looking around, but we'll have it set to, oh, battery died. All right, so we have our boost control turned on, frequency set to 39, intervals we can change and adjust. I'm using the boost pin on Mega Squirt, and then we'll leave it for open loop. Fuel cut and all that stuff, this is what mine are set to for the time being because I'm on super low boost. But once all that's set, we can burn it, which it's already burned, so I'm not really worried about that. Go to the testing methods, and then we'll enable the test mode, which we've already done. And then we'll leave this set to what the boost controller was set to, which is 39. And then we can come over here to boost, and we can hit on. And it's hard to hear from here, but let me set the pulse real quick. And this way you can probably hear it opening and closing over and over again you can feel it actively making movement so it's cool seems like it's working it's hooked up which is exactly what we're looking forward to so now that we have that we can play around with our settings i need to do a couple more things all right so uh, i think we're going to end up making a bracket just for our electronic boost controller now that we're going to try and use it we need to move these around don't worry about that but um, I had a smaller piece, it just didn't seem like it was gonna fit with what I needed. So I'm pretty much going to attach this at the back. It slides down, one-handed things. Uh, slide it from the back, put it on this, and then bend it a little bit just so it'll get on this hole. And then I can just attach it. And it'll be right in front of the turbo, right there, easy to reach, out of the way. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Put this on the vise and bend it up. So we have our lines. Basically the top two are the lines that are gonna go into the electron boost controller. Bottom one is the bolt. And then I need to draw a line just to where I can bend it. These holes are gonna be a little bit higher. Uh, I don't have anything to penetrate through the, the small fixture that's there, but um, yeah, drill these holes, get back to it. And the persuader. So, uh, game plan is to essentially use this. We are going to tap the back of these so that way we can just put some M4 bolts through. And then, uh, yeah, we'll use this to tap it and we'll be set. So let's get to it. Secondary measure. Works just the same. We're gonna do the uninstall of the fuel pump and then we'll throw the new one in, get everything teed up. I'm basically gonna be following the car passion channels direct connection uh, with the expansion part. So let's go through it.
here. Here is the stock assembly for the fuel line. Pretty straightforward. Leveler, bag, or stock. This band to hold it in. Power ground all the way up to the top. And we're set. So really all I should need to do is pop off the screw on the bottom. Slip this off. Take that off. Pop the new one in. And I think that's it. I think this is a direct replacement. So, sweet. And just so you're aware, if anybody's doing this, it only goes on one way. So, the lines, the holes don't line up otherwise. Oh, we had to drill it out in order to get that one little screw. Now, unfortunately, but it's all good. It's just the name of the game when it's in fuel for 30 plus years. So, cut that off, can pull this off, and start working to put the new one on. So, I filter going in place. We're just going to take this off, slide it up, and then you should be good to put this on the bottom and try and bracket it in again. So, all right, got the old one out. It is an M5 bolt. So, got a replacement, throw that in, put the sock on, throw everything back on, and then see where we're at. So again, the old, now we have the new. Connected in, direct connection, all OEM stuff, besides the one bolt on the bottom, and that's it. Let's throw it back in. Out with the old, and in with the new. I'm surprised I didn't break any, like the floater. pump going and then the car starts up and runs for a second so we're not doing bad not doing bad now we just need to do the hardware kit and then we'll be set won't lie to you i redid this because i didn't like the way it looked so now we'll redo it again. all right so we got our ebc put in um, we just got to put the ground on real quick and then we should be set for this part of it and then we can hook it up to all the lines. I just gotta look that up real quick just to make sure I got it right. And then uh, we should be set. All right, so we got everything hooked up. Uh, essentially the way that Craig had from the car, car passenger channel, uh, everything's set up the same way. So relays in, all the wires are hooked up. So we should be able to hook up the battery, test it out, make sure it works. And then we can close all this up again. So it took me a little while, just cause I had to rewatch the video a few different times, but um, super beneficial. Thank you, Craig, for all your help. So now we should be able to just put this back on and then go from there. Let's just make sure the car doesn't blow up. I put this on first. Good at don't take for granted. Okay. Don't betray it. Car did not blow up, which is good. What if you do? But I need to move it. Okay, battery's hooked up. Nothing popped or anything yet. So let's just make sure the car turns off. Fuel pump kicks on. Seems like it has a good power. Oh wow. Really well. Sweet. And that's it for this episode. Now that we got it up and running, I can put all this stuff back and we should be good to go. So the fuel pump's running. It's always running through the relay now. I'm just gonna double side tape that relay up somewhere in there. I don't really wanna drill any more holes in this for the time being, but um, yeah, man, we are we are pretty much back in business. I'm gonna get a different, gonna get a different varial throttle position sensor. So that way I'm able to actually use it. Um, but otherwise it seems like everything else is doing what it's supposed to. There's no leaks right now. We're looking good, looking good. I don't smell anything, which is good, which is good. Yeah, man, I think we're here. So like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for the next one, man. We got so much more to do with this car. So I'm going to go ahead and fix all this stuff or not fix it, put it back together and then uh, go for a drive. I need to drop it off still because like I said, a long, long time ago, I still need to get these quarter paint or these uh, fenders painted. But eventually, eventually, one thing at a time, right? So hopefully uh, tomorrow, maybe, maybe tomorrow I'll drive it. See how it works. But yeah. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace. Adios.